for the data structure data framework and show you the first lines, the first five rows of your data frame. So in the first column, we have the time series. And then we have the columns with the, uh, the head, to which are the header are the number, the ID of your station. Uh, so in this case, uh, we have uh, the number are from one and uh, are consecutive. But as you can see here, we, we don't have the station number 10. So this is the ID, and this column you can read the ID of your station. So for example, if you download the data from your Meteo web page, probably the ID of the station can be different from this one. Uh, this cell, I just uh, want to skip the, if there are duplicates, I just skip the, the second one. And here we have a, a plot of the, our data frame. And uh, this is uh, this plot is done with uh, the command plot. That is a method of the data frame. And these are the arguments of this function. So for example, the first one means that the label on the x-axis are rotated by put five degrees. Uh, you can set the color map, the width of the lines, uh, and uh, for example, the, if there is the grid in the block. Then you can set the labels for, for the axis, uh, the title, the legend, uh, and so on. So you can customize your plot as you prefer. Then uh, we, have, uh, we can do some statistics. Uh, so we use the function describe. And so for each uh, station, we have uh, this row. So we have a count that reads uh, how, many, uh, in the, how many rows we have with the data. Uh, we have the line that tells the, tells the mean of the, the data, the standard deviation, the minimum value, the quantile, and the maximum value. For example, for station one, uh, there is no data, so count is zero. For station five, we have uh, 45,000 uh, data, more or less. And we can uh, plot, uh, make a box plot. So there is already implemented a function, plot.box, and this is the output. So in some, for some station, we don't have plot because uh, there are all no, not a number. Another advantage of using uh, a data frame is that we can uh, sample uh, our time series. So in this case, uh, we resample on a daily time scale. And since uh, it is a rainfall, when we resample, we just uh, uh, sum all the, all the data we have. For example, for temperature, uh, probably it is uh, more important to use uh, not sum but the argument mean. So we can add the average, the mean temperature for the day. And as before, we can use the describe function to see all the, the statistics. And as before, we can uh, plot uh, make a box plot of the data. The same thing can be done with a monthly rainfall. In this case, we, the, the sample argument is a 1ms. And uh, we can also some, do some statistics on the annual rainfall. In this case, we have to change uh, the argument to AS. And everything is the same. We can compute also the total rainfall for each station. So in this case, we have uh, a new variable, total rain. <coughs> PD data frame is a function that um, allows you to create a new data frame 
in which uh, we have uh, the uh, this string means is the header of the new column, um, and then we define which are the values for this column. So we have the f dot sum. So we make a, a summation for each column along axis zero, and we can plot uh, the data. So here the important is uh, to know which are the functions that are already uh, available for a data frame and using them to compute the new data. Another function is uh, this, uh, this one, the cum sum, that will compute the cumulator rainfall. So we create a new time series with the cumulator rainfall. And as before, we define a new variable, this one, cumulator rain, that is a new data frame. And here we can plot uh, the data with uh, the function uh, plot. And uh, here we can uh, compute the mean rainfall for each month. Uh, uh, considering all the, month, uh, the monthly months uh, over the entire period. So we make uh, the mean uh, for each month and then we make the mean uh, of the January months uh, for all the years we have. And this is the plot. <coughs> So this, uh, this notebook uh, is done uh, for the rainfall data and you can uh, starting from this one you can create a new notebook uh, for the temperature. Keep in mind that you have to do some modification, for example um, when uh, we computed the statistics, uh, for, uh, for example the annual statistic, uh, statistic for rainfall we use the argument sum, for temperature it is Best, the best one, the best choice is to use the mean, and probably other some graphs. Uh, for example, the total rainfall data is not can be not used for for the temperature. So, so you have to do some modification to this now. Now we can open the OMS console, and we can run the scene file to compute the experimental variogram that the Giuseppe presented to you before. <coughs> so here we define the start date and end date of our period. You should have the same sim file that I am presenting you. Uh, we define the components that um, are necessary. Uh, so just a remark on this uh, ED field. <coughs> Uh, this ID field uh, in this case uh, is ID because if you open your uh, time series uh, here in the header uh, line 5 uh, we have uh, the string ID so the <coughs> If uh, the string in this uh, should be uh, is different, uh, or different, uh, for example, val, we have to modify in the same file uh, this uh, this variable and write val. There, is, there should be this uh, correspondence. Then we have uh, the reader of the station, and uh, also in this case you have to check that the your shape file, the name of the field is uh, id. And uh, the values uh, uh, contain this line, 1, 2, and 3, are used from the component uh, to, uh, to check the correspondence in the shape file. So for each station, here you have the data that are measured, but from the shape file, uh, using the same ID, you can retrieve the uh, coordinates of your metric station. And here we have the writer for the distances file and for the semivariance file. And we can run the same file. <coughs> Do 
with Python script, uh, we prepared the uh, precipitation time. Why we, we calculate a lot of the statistics variables for precipitation with Python? Uh, I mean, okay. um, what is the relation between <coughs> constant precipitation and Python precipitation time? <coughs> Python precipitation? Python is great for rainfall. Okay. What is the relation between this console? Oh, the first notebook is just uh, <coughs> to visualize the data. And just, just um, to see uh, the situation. Yeah, the situation of your data. Okay. How many station have values, uh, which are the statistics of your data, and so on. So once uh, the simulation is finished, you can open your output folder. So in your project, uh, you go on output, uh, Cavone, Rigging, and if you open, uh, for example, the distance is uh, the chip uh, CSV, uh, you can see we have uh, a time series with the same, uh, the starting date is uh, the one that we set in the same file. We can check that the end date is the same of the same file. And uh, the column, uh, in this case, starts from 0 and goes to 7 and corresponds to the uh, this one, the cutoff of the divide variable, that is 8. If you set it to 5, we have 5 columns. And then we have uh, the other file that is the x bar underscore flagship, uh, that is the same file with the uh, in uh, which we have the experimental diagram for each uh, uh, for each data uh, of the time series. Now we have to compute uh, like uh, an average of the experimental diagram. So the average can be done uh, considering the total period. Probably is not the best choice. Uh, you can define the smaller in period, for example the monthly uh, period of which you can compute the mean experimental diagram. Uh, to do this we use the notebook uh, 1E and uh, as before the first cell is uh, we can import uh, all the libraries uh, that we need in this case, we import another Python script that is function that is uh, always in your uh, in your folder, uh, and then we in the last uh, the last line we set uh, in the project in the OMS project. So now the input data for this uh, notebook uh, are contained the, in the output uh, Carbon Cleaging folder. And uh, the input data for the, this notebook uh, is a vector, a list uh, of dates. So in this case, uh, we have the start date and the end date of our period. So now we are going to do a, an average on the total period of the experimental diagram. But then we are going to, to see also to do a seasonal average. We can, uh, here we can, in the variogram input file name, uh, we define the input data for the single variogram. And then we have the input uh, file name for the distances file. And then we define the output file name. For the output file name, uh, we just add, uh, we use the same name of the input file and we add uh, this, uh, this string uh, underscore total. That means we are doing an average of the total period and uh, underscore mean because it is a, a mean. So now you, you can run this cell. And uh, in this uh, cell, uh, we are calling the function, for example, to read the time series. Uh, a function contained in the, in the function.pi file, compute mean, that uh, computes the average for the semi variogram and the distances. And finally, we write uh, the time series, the file, with the function write the time series underscore series.
once you have run uh, this uh, this cell, you can open uh, your uh, output carbon cleaching folder. And if uh, we open uh, the xbar bar, uh, underscore prechip uh, underscore dot admin csv file, you can see that uh, here we have uh, uh, eight columns. Uh, and the first column is uh, uh, for the time series, and then we have the uh, average, the mean of the experimental value. In this case, uh, the data is um, our choice. Uh, we choose to set uh, the date of this, uh, of this line uh, with uh, the starting <coughs> date of your period. And now we try to, um, to compute the average, uh, the mean of the experimental variogram uh, on a seasonal time scale. So we are going to modify first uh, the dates variable. So we enter other uh, dates that define the periods we are considering. For example, we choose uh, to enter the 15th of March. So we have uh, 2014, 03, 15, and then we enter the hour. So this is uh, this uh, couple of dates uh, define the first period uh, on which we perform the average of the experimental biogram. Then we choose the 15 of June. So the important is to enter this uh, as a, a string. Then we have the 15th of September. The 15th of December. 2014, and then we copy the dates and change just the, the year, so we have uh, 2015, and finally we have the last date of our time series that uh, is uh, the 15th of December 2015. <coughs> uh, the input file for the diagram and the distances are the same. Now we change just the output file name. So instead of total, uh, we use the string uh, seasonal. And we have uh, completed to define our input. Of course, if you want to uh, perform a calibration on a monthly uh, times uh, monthly time scale. Here you should uh, enter other dates uh, to define the, all the months. And now you can uh, run uh, the cells. So in the uh, output folder, uh, we have uh, the new file. I'm going to open the uh, experimental value and file. So now we you can see that we have uh, more than one date, and uh, each date refers to the starting period. Yes, could you jump back? Uh, Go back to the yeah, just to check. The 
this one. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, um, in the output file, the data refers to the starting data of your period. Uh, because this uh, uh, here you, we are computing an average for a period, so we have to identify associate with this average a date, and we choose to use the starting date of the period. So, for example. In the, the output file, uh, the first data, this one, refers to the period from, uh, that goes from the 15th of December to the 15th of March. This one uh, from March to June and so on. Of course, this is uh, your choice. If you prefer, you can use or you should uh, modify the, the function uh, compute mean. And if you prefer to use another data to identify the period, you can uh, you can do this. So now this uh, um, this two file we created uh, are used to in the calibration and. Uh, these are the experimental values that we are going to, to calibrate uh, later. In uh, OMS, there is another SIM file, that is uh, the SIM file 2 underscore TD, and you can open it. Uh, this SIM file computes uh, a theoretical diagram. So before to calibrate the experimental diagram, it is um, some, it's a good choice uh, uh, to perform a sensitivity analysis, analysis of your theoretical diagram. So you can change the type of the diagram and also the parameters of the diagram in order to understand which could be um, a good diagram uh, to use for in the calibration. So in this SIM file, we define the start date and end date. Uh, in this case, the start date and end date uh, has to be the same. So we are going to use just one, uh, create one, uh, one value in the output file. Uh, in the semi variogram type is a variable that can be linear, vessel, or circular, and refer to the name of the variogram, the radical variogram that we are going to use. Variable and period are two variables that are used to write the output file. So variable can be precip if you are working with the precipitation data, or temp if you are using a temperature. And period, uh, it is used to, can be total or seasonal according with the, um, uh, the experimental variable you are, you are considering. So we have the components, uh, we have uh, a reader for the distances, uh, a reader for the variogram. We have the component uh, TD, that is uh, for the theoretical variogram. And finally we have the writer for the semi -variables. <coughs> So for example, now we are using, uh, we are working with uh, precipitation, so variable is uh, precip. Uh, and uh, we consider the total uh, mean the mean of the semi variogram computing on the total period so we set period equal to total automatically we are we define the input file name using the variable uh, period and variable we defined above and the same for the reader of the variogram uh, for the theoretical variogram model name, we, are, we use the variable semi variogram title we defined before. And here we can uh, enter manually a value for the range, the nugget, and the season. How we can uh, decide uh, which value can be used? Well, we can use the, the second notebook, uh, that is uh, number two. Rainfall experimental variogram. Uh, 
In this case, we are going to visualize the experimental variogram, the mean experimental variogram we computed before. So as before, you can run all the cells to import the libraries. You can set in the output carbone region folder. And here we enter the name of the file. So we have uh, xbar underscore redshift underscore dot underscore mean csv file. That is the file containing the mean experimental diagram. Then we have the file of distances. Here we read the time series. And uh, we here we create a, another, a new data frame that is uh, created uh, we get the function from cut, which means that we take the two data frames and just uh, merge them. And here we can plot the experimental value. So in the x axis, we have the distances, and the y axis, the same value. And from this plot, we can uh, um, somehow guess the values for the range, the seal, and the magnitude. So, for example, a good, uh, a possible choice for the range can be between uh, 40,000, 50,000 meters. Here, uh, the seal can be um, 0 0.2 more or less, and the seal uh, around 0 0.4. So we go in the same file and uh, we set uh, the range. Uh, I set it to 50,000, uh, the nugget to 0 0.2, and the seal to 0 0.22. And we can see what happened. So we run the simulation. Do you <coughs> Nicole, yeah. distance is okay, but 0 0.2 is not okay. How come? Uh, you look at the experimental diagram here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, for example, the nugget is around uh, 0 0.2, this one. Because it's to 10 to minus 1. Yeah. This one, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And the seal, uh, uh, because I tried to um, make some trials, so I found that 0 0.2 could be a good choice. But this is uh, uh, just to understand uh, which are also the ranges on which we can uh, the ranges for the calibration. So when we calibrate, we have to define the maximum and the minimum value for each uh, variable we are going to calibrate. So it is good that we don't have a too much large uh, range, but try to understand which is a reasonable range. So for example, here I guess that uh, for the nugget and the seed, the range is 0, 1 is a good range. This is a not good choice to set uh, 0 and uh, 100. I mean, the calibration runs uh, and it uh, gives you some values. But of course, if you increase the range in which you are looking for the best parameters, it, it is difficult maybe to find the best one. So once the simulation uh, has run, we can uh, go back to the notebook. And we compare the experimental variogram with the theoretical variogram. So we can open uh, the notebook uh, 3. So in this case, we are going to make our one plot with the exper mean experimental variogram <coughs> and the theoretical variogram we have just uh, computed. So as you can see, the first cell are always the same. Here I'm going to read the experimental variogram. So I just check the name of the input file uh, are correct. And now I'm going to read the theoretical variogram. So in this case, uh, uh, the name is different, it's not this one, but it's pd uh, underscore Oh, sorry. Here, I didn't change uh, 
Okay, I'm trying to use the circular theoretical polygram. <coughs> so we have a circular. Precip. Underscore tonda. Dot CSV. So this is uh, uh, in the <coughs> blue square represent the experimental variogram and the red one, the, the red line, the theoretical variogram. If you want, you can change the name of the legend and of the title. So in this cell, you have uh, uh, the common title, and we can change the linear with circular. And um, some lines above, uh, we have uh, the app underscore TV linear shift. So from this uh, example, we can uh, <coughs> say that the circular theoretical variable is a good candidate. And uh, the values uh, of uh, we set uh, are quite good. So the range is uh, when we are going to define the, the calibration uh, sim file, uh, the ranges for the variable range nugget and seal. We just make sure that uh, these values are contained in this. So now we can try also with the other type of. Uh, Variogram, for example, for the, with the linear or the vessel variogram, or we can just change the, the parameters here. For example, if I set a different value for the seal, maybe 0 0.4, and I run the simulation. I just uh, go back to the notebook and uh, run this cell, so I read the, the new file and as you can see, um, the value for the seal is not uh, is not This file is not, uh, I mean, this is uh, like uh, just to understand uh, how the theoretical diagram behaves so when you change the type of the diagram, you can understand what happened and the same for, for the parameters. You can just have an idea of what, uh, of what are you going to, to calibrate. Any questions? So here I run another simulation. I change the value for the seal. And this is the output. Uh, okay, for example, now I see that it is uh, too high here. So I try to choose another value, a smaller one. But the range, the initial range in which you choose those values? Okay, I just look at the, the notebook two. Yeah. Looking at this graph, here, usually, I can define the last part of the graph where the values are going to, like to go to the same values. So this is the range. And a good option is uh, from, uh, I don't know, 40,000 meters, uh, between 40,000 and 50,000 meters. Uh, the nugget is the interception with the y-axis. So maybe it is around 0 0.2, because here it is a scientific notation. And the seal, uh, that is the value that is uh, reached at the range, it is around 0 0.4. This is the first guess. Then I go back to the simulation, TV simulation, I try to enter these values. <coughs> 0 0.4 is where they go flat. Yeah. This is the lowest one. The lowest one. Yeah. But of course, this is uh, not the 
I mean, when you calibrate the calibration algorithm, does it do this for you? But is it just to have an idea of, on how the theoretical values are being? In the notebook three, if you want, uh, it was uh, prepared to have the linear theoretical variogram. Then if you go down, you have the tessel one and the circular one. Uh, it is the same, uh, the, the, uh, the same cell copied and uh, in which I changed just the name for the title and for the, for the lesson. Of course, uh, when uh, you prepare your notebook, you can start from this one and create your own notebook, uh, just copying the cell or improve or change some whatever you want. Okay. So now Giuseppe is going to present to you the calibration sim file. And they will move uh, towards the temperature and then no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> 